so our today's topic is fetal circulation so before going in details about the fetal circulation there are some important terms that we must understand first is the umbilical artery umbilical vein sinus venosus foramen ovale and ductus arteriosus कुछ इंपॉर्टेंट टर्म्स है जो हमें पता होनी चाहिए बिफोर वी स्टार्ट डिस्कसिंग अबाउट द होल फीटर सर्कुलेशन नाउ कमिंग फर्स्ट टू द अम्बेलिकल आर्टरीज अम्बेलिकल आर्टरीज जो होती है एज वी नो दे कैरी द इम्प्योर ब्लड फ्रॉम फीटस टू द प्लेसेंटा और टू द मदर एंड दिस अम्बेलिकल आर्टरी दे आर टू इन नंबर द राइट एंड द लेफ्ट एंड दे अराइज फ्रॉम द इंटरनेट एलेक आर्टरीज these umbilical artery when they arise from the internal iliac artery then they pass along the sides of the urinary bladder and then parallel to the median plane to reach the umbilicus so as soon as they reach the umbilicus they pass out through the umbilicus and gets incorporated in the umbilical cord and through the umbilical they reach to the placenta where they umbilical arteries they ramify in the allantois and finally they terminate as the capillaries but as we know after the birth the umbilical cord it is severed and their walls get is thickened and their lumen is reduced and they can converted into the cord like structures these thicken cord like structures they are now called as round ligaments of urinary bladder so the umbilical artery jo hote hai they are gets after the birth they gets converted into the cord like structure jo known as round ligaments of urinary bladder and these round ligaments they are present at the margins of the lateral ligaments of the urinary bladder as we know the urinary bladder is kept in position with the help of three ligament there are two lateral ligaments and one is the median ligament and at the margins of these two lateral ligaments there are these cord like structures they are which we call as the lateral they are called as the round ligaments of urinary bladder so here in the diagram you can see this is here you can see this is the urinary bladder this is the median ligament and these are the two later ligaments which are which keeps the urinary bladder in position and here you can see these are the umbilical arteries go pass along the sides of the urinary bladder so here these are the two umbilical arteries now coming to the next term that is the umbilical veins the umbilical vein they carry the pure blood from the mother to the fetus and the umbilical veins they begins as the capillary radicals in the placental villi so when they arise from the placenta as capillary radicals these capillaries then unite and they form the umbilical veins the umbilical veins then run within the umbilical cord with the umbilical arteries and in the umbilical cord these umbilical veins then now reach the umbilicus so when they reach the umbilicus the two umbilical veins they separate themselves from the other constituents of the umbilical cord and they enter into the body of the fetus so when they enter into the body they unite together and they form a single umbilical vein the umbilical vein then passes on the floor of the abdomen and then reach the liver so as soon as the umbilical vein reach the liver it enters through the umbilical fissure and after the birth when the umbilical cord is severed the umbilical veins they now gets converted into the round ligaments of the 
liver. So another term is the sinus venosus. The sinus venosus it is formed by the umbilical vein and the portal vein. In case of the ox and dog, a duct arises from the sinus venosus, which is known as ductus venosus. It carries some amount of the blood directly from the umbilical vein into the posterior vena cava. And after the birth, there is formation of a clot in the ductus venosus and it gets obliterated. So after birth, the ductus venosus gets closed. Now coming to the next is the foramen ovale. The foramen ovale, it is an oval shaped foramen that is present in the interatrial septum. And this foramen, it is guarded by a valve which prevents the regurgitation of the blood from the left to the right atrium. So after the birth, this foramen will it gets closed and it forms a depression or a fossa which is known as fossa ovalis. Next term is ductus arteriosus. As we know in the fetus, the lungs, they are solid and the blood is pumped from the right ventricle into the pulmonary artery. And from the pulmonary artery, the blood goes through the ductus arteriosus into the posterior iota. And from the posterior iota carries this blood to the posterior parts of the body. So after the birth, this ductus arteriosus is converted into a ligament that is known as ligamentum arteriosum. Or it's also called as Botelis ligament. Now coming to the main topic, fetal circulation. Fetal circulation, as we know, the umbilical artery, they carries the impure blood of the fetus to the placenta and after the exchange of the gases and the renewal of the nutrients, the blood is then carried back to the fetus with the help of the umbilical veins. The umbilical vein, they pass through the umbilical cord, they reach to the umbilicus, then they unite and they form single umbilical vein which runs on the floor of the abdomen and through the umbilical fissure enter into the liver. Here it joins with the portal vein and forms sinus venosus. A part of the blood it is directly carried from the umbilical vein by a duct that is known as ductus venosus into the posterior vena cava, where this blood gets mixed with the venous blood. The venous blood, it is carried from the posterior part of the trunk and the hind limbs. This mixed blood, it is carried by the posterior vena cava to the right atrium and from the right atrium, it goes into the left atrium through the foramen ovale. From the left atrium, the blood goes to the atrioventricular orifice guarded by the bicuspid valve into the left ventricle where it is pumped into the iota. From the iota, most of the blood goes through the anterior iota to the head, neck and the forelimbs. While the remainder of the blood that goes into the posterior iota. So the, when the blood through the anterior iota, it is circulated into the anterior parts of the body and the venous blood, it is returned to the right atrium by means of anterior vena cava. The anterior vena cava carries the blood to the right atrium and from the right atrium, the blood goes into the right ventricle through right atrioventricular orifice which is guarded by tricuspid valve and from the right atrium it is pumped into the pulmonary artery and from the pulmonary artery via the ductus arteriosus it goes into the posterior iota 
and the posterior iota carry it to the posterior parts of the body and then from the posterior parts then through the internal iliac artery it goes into the umbilical arteries and then finally it reaches to the placenta and now the cycle continues so from here in the diagram you can see from this is are the umbilical arteries they carries the impure blood from the fetus into the placenta and from placenta after the exchange of the gases and renewal of nutrients it is carried by the umbilical veins which get unite and form a single umbilical vein the umbilical vein joins in the liver with the portal vein form sinus venosus and then there is a duct which carry the blood directly from the umbilical vein into the posterior vein while it gets with the venous blood of the posterior vena cava and from the liver the hepatic vein carries the blood that again goes into the posterior vena cava from posterior vena cava the blood it is carried into the right atrium from right atrium it goes into the left atrium through forum and ovale and then to the left ventricle left ventricle pumps the blood into the iota from iota it goes into the anterior iota which supply it to the anterior parts of the body that is the head neck and the folium's when the blood here is circulated the venous blood it is carried by the anterior vena cava back to the right atrium now from the right atrium the blood goes into the right ventricle and then through the pulmonary artery and from the pulmonary artery it goes through the ductus arteriosus into the posterior iota posterior iota carry the blood to the posterior parts of the body and also to the internal iliac artery internal iliac artery then carries this into the umbilical artery which carry this impure blood back to the placenta so here you can see <coughs> the different color they represent red color represent high level high oxygen content then medium oxygen content and the low oxygen content so here you can see this is the fetal circulatory system of the fowl here this is the placenta these are the placental arteries they carry the impure blood to the placenta after the oxygenation this here is the single that the left umbilical vein is there which carry it to the liver forum sinus venosus with the portal vein and here is a duct which carries this blood directly in the posterior vena cava posterior vena cava carries to the right atrium then to the into the left atrium then the left ventricle and left ventricle carried iota from the iota and anterior iota to the head neck and the four limbs and the venous blood is then carried by the anterior vena cava into the again back into the right atrium from right atrium it goes into the <coughs> right ventricle and from right ventricle through the pulmonary artery and go into the posterior iota via the ductus arteriosus from the posterior iota carry it to the posterior parts of the body and then via the umbilical arteries it is carried to the placenta again so this was all about the fetal circulation so here you can see this is the structure of the umbilical cord so this is the urethras which is attached with the cranial part of the fetal urinary bladder and these are the umbilical arteries and these are the umbilical veins which gets united and form single umbilical vein and here this is the allantoic sac so whole this whole structure is the umbilical cord which makes a connection between the fetus and the placenta or mother in case of the ox there are two umbilical arteries and two umbilical veins 
in case of dog there are two umbilical artery two umbilical veins pig two umbilical artery there is a left umbilical vein only present the right one atrophies horse in case of horse there are two umbilical arteries and one umbilical vein that is the left umbilical vein is already there thank you